Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 2 vs 2 on chemical and I'm going to be using the new 5th French Armoured Division, the 5e Division Blindy. This map is pretty cool, this is the 2v2 version of chemical, usually it's the 4v4 type but this has since been added to the game so I wanted to give it a go and see basically how it works. You get this really cool sort of terrain on the left in the chemical plant and then on the right you have the forested area. So I like the terrain in this and I thought it would be a really good map to show off the strengths of the French because they really excel in short to medium range because the power on their tanks weapons is still good but they're quite lightly armored so you kind of want to peek in and out of combat. Anyway as you can see at the start I did use the recon deployment to deploy a bunch of troops onto the island directly. There was only like a small area, that's why they were all bunched up here. But I managed to get them onto the island and we're going to be spreading out. I've got an AMX-10 for each of the roads. So we've got the set, the normal AMX-10RC here and then we've got the AMX-10 Sublindi, Sublindi, I guess it would be, um, on the right hand side. These guys have extra armor, so they've got four front, three side, two rear. The AMX-10 is three front, two side, so that extra one front and side armor does make quite a nice difference when you're engaging uh, sort of medium tanks. We've got the Alouette leading the charge. I've also got a VRA with the recon there, but here comes a Mirage right at the start. Going to be taking out one of the MI-2s. These usually carry like Spetsnaz, so wiping that out with a Mirage early on is definitely worth it. It's a beautiful aircraft. Look at that. I decided against going in for another strike because I was thinking of hitting this MI2 on the right, but then I saw the OSA, so I evac'd it. But then Sturm Source is uh, Eclairus, I guess they are. <laughs> I'm going to butcher all of this pronunciation again. Uh, took out the OSA anyway, so I could have probably done a run with it. So I actually ended up bringing in a Jaguar to try and take care of the OSA. That's when I actually realized that the OSA was probably already dead. There was this MI2 sneaking around the side, but I didn't notice that at the time. Uh, I've got Ronin 3 coming up. These are all of my like backline units that have now started to arrive, but I got pretty far in thanks to my deployment on the island. Uh, the AMX 10s ready to take on uh, the units here. Managed to take out the gas before it unloaded. And we're going to be engaging these BTR 60s as well. Managed to unload one of them. Take out the second. I think he was just uh, not really expecting that to happen. My Jaguar does end up getting shot down because I had it floating around. I saw a Tunguska here briefly. But I think he managed to like micro that, turn off the radar. That's why his transports died on the left because he was busy doing that instead. Uh, BMP2, going to be coming around the corner, gets popped by the AMX-10. He does manage to unload it in time though. So the AMX-10s are going to be engaging the Mostrauki instead. My infantry here with their LRAC, going to be able to kill another transport. So, so far, so good. I've got off to a really nice start. Uh, being able to deploy on the island with my recon units was really nice. I'm not sure if they can do that. I would assume that they can, balance-wise. It would make sense if they could. Uh, but yeah, behind all of my other recon troops, you can see I've brought up a bunch of Mistrals. I've got the Roland that I already showed you. I've got the P4 Milan that's going to be covering the right-hand side here. And as soon as these all unload, you can see the P4 truck's going to be running away. I've also brought up a couple of these uh, voltages with the Appalas, which have brought in the uh, T2013. These are really nice, these VABs, because they're fast and they have the auto cannon on them. So... Firing away there onto the Sapodi. The BMP2 is going to get the better of one of mine though, but then the AMX-10 returns the favour. These AMX-10s, when they're stationary, they've got 65% accuracy. It's really nice. So pretty damn accurate. Going to be hit by a tank here, and I was hoping to double team it. It turned out to be a T-80BV. So I'm looking to engage with this AMX-10, or these two AMX-10s, and then these two AMX-10s at the same time. So he's moving it to the left, which is fine by me, because I can peek out of here and engage. Unfortunately, that one goes down early, but then I managed to get these ones around the corner and engage it before it reloads. Side shot does a trick and takes it out. Mistral going to be engaging the MI-24P that he's brought up to counter the MX-10s, but so he's going to have to force that back. 
And furthermore, I have some artillery now firing away. The AMX ALF 1s. These are big boy artillery. They do have the 4.19 damage, which is very powerful against infantry squads. They can take out a lot of guys all at once. So I had that engaging this infantry as we were engaging it with the voltages. Unfortunately, my VAB is going to get taken out here. That's going to be a like Spetsnaz squad that dropped out of the MI2 earlier. Uh, my AMX-10 did take some rocket fire from the MI-24, but I'm just going to be walking forwards with the Mistral. I'm going to try and shoot that down. We do manage to hit it again, but not quite enough damage to finish it off. The MI-24 does have armor, which is why it can take multiple shots in order to kill it. And there it goes. MI-24 P down. Uh, MJ does manage to get a leader in here. I was a little bit confused where it was because obviously I have quite a lot of recon here and I control most of the sector. Well, it turns out it was right in the corner just here behind the uh, container. So BRDM going to be going down. AMX-10 pops that pretty quickly. And we're off to a very, very, very good start uh, against MJ. I think he wasn't expecting my MX-10s to be so far up. These are really scary units to deal with. And it's something that I would definitely recommend that you bring in. Sorry about the camera. Uh, <laughs> something that I definitely recommend you bring in if you're using this deck. Uh, the other deck that has them, I think one of the German decks, has some of the MX-10s and they are super strong. So yeah, definitely uh, bring them along. Now my Mistral does end up discovering the Spetsnaz for me. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. My deck currently doesn't have a bomber or of any kind, which is something that I would have used in this situation to get rid of them. Or even like a helicopter with rockets or something might have been quite nice. But yeah, we didn't have any of that. I did lose that VAB. That was, I think, a mistake from my part. I think it had infantry in as well. So T-62 going to be able to get that free kill and my Grens here have actually run out of Appalas ammo so not going to be able to kill that T-62 either. So I'm coming in with the Seed missile looking for the Tunguska unfortunately going to miss so the Jaguar is going to get shot down. Uh, this uh, Voltager coming under fire so I'm just going to get that deep into cover and use the MX-10 to try and engage it. MX-10s are great for cleaning up these sorts of half tracks. They can take um, some damage from these auto cannons quite quickly, but the idea is that you engage them at range so that they're not as accurate. I managed to engage that BMP2. Unfortunately, my Appalas squad goes down. I couldn't really get it out of there in time. The HGM of the BMP2 does land its first hit, so unfortunately, I do lose one of the MX 10s. And now we have the MX-10s engaging the Spetsnaz, and I'm going to have the T-20 here unload my Grupa Antichar and uh, head over the auto cannon just to fire on them whilst this unit continues to move forwards. I really like the sound of this gun, but it is a, a little bit quiet. You can hear like the sound of the auto cannon landing louder than you could hear the actual thing firing, which is funny. But yeah, the Spetsnaz is going to get taken out. Unfortunately, my MX-10 go down afterwards because of the T-62 here, but going to land a shot. Takes it down to low cohesion. And that's going to allow my MX-10 to get the job done. Probably would have died if it took a shot there if it, like the T-62 landed. It was risky for me to stay in combat after firing the first shot, but here comes some artillery. And that's going to be hitting the T-80. So this is the AMX. Alf 1 here. Got two of them, and they're going to be continuously helping me from here on. My infantry engaging theirs. I actually really like how the French infantry look like with their FAMAS. It was a bit of a mistake on my part. I shouldn't have really reversed it into line of sight of these BMP uh, Mediterraki because they do have their RPGs. MIA is going to take a shot from the Mistral. MX-30 trying to get another shot onto the T-62. Currently going to come under fire from the HGM 
of the T-80, but that misses, thankfully. I'm just going to roll out of line of sight there to make sure that it can't get another shot off. So with us holding this sector, it is a three-point sector. So it is giving us a pretty big lead right now. We're up to almost 600 points. On the right, though, I'm going to be bringing in my gazelle. And this gazelle will be able to help support against this armor further back. T-62 does get taken out. I managed to sneak line of sight further to the left. So I'm not in line of sight of the T-80, but I was in line of sight of the T-62. P-4 Milan's trying to get rid of these transports. Oh, missed twice already, though, which is unfortunate. The Hot 2 is now going to have a go instead. Did end up losing one of my infantry squads here before it unloaded. Both of my AMX 10s go down, but the one sapper is there. Going to be able to do some decent damage to the motor stroke in the open and take them out. So that was fine. <laughs> now the Hot 2 just using up so much ammunition because everything I kept firing at get, got killed beforehand. I'll take out that transport so I can't sell it at least. My Sapper coming under fire. The AMX 10 does have. It's auto cannon mounted in the turret. And it can use that as well as its main gun. And it's going to do quite a lot of damage. And when it gets this machine gun on ra in range as well, this can really chew infantry. You just got to be careful of those AT units or the infantry that have AT that is 850 meter range because you're going to take a decent chunk of damage in the front armor with only 13 front armor particularly if it's like a uh, one of those russian squads with like the modern rpg is out i'm a little too late to move that i saw the first missile come in i moved it started moving it but it was too late already yeah, this is a good example of like the amx 30 really just beating on the motor so it's got the machine gun on target it's got the cannons on target it just deletes infantry very very fast Grens engaging the Modestrauki. Managed to take out the BTR. This terrain is just so nice because I c you can see me just popping in and out of cover with these AMX 10s. And because they're so fast with a 72 km per hour off road speed, it works really, really well. Is having a really hard time getting efficiency out of these units. Like the T62s are a good idea because they can kind of match and kill off a similar point uh, price unit. Like these AMX 10s, if they come up against like a T62 and the T62 kills it, it's like the T62 pays itself off. But in the case of like the T80, the T80 kind of struggles here. And if my AMX 10s manage to side shot it like I did earlier then it's really not paying itself off because they're 225 points compared to the only like 85 or 90 points of these other AMX 10s. That's why the AMX 30s are also quite efficient at close range because they have 18 AP on their main gun, which allows them to get a lot of damage in at close range. Uh, and they're quite cheap because they don't have much armor. So you can really trade well with them. I've got some aircraft coming in. We've got the Mirage. Going for the MiG-25 RBF, we got the Jaguar coming in. That's going to be trying to use its AS-30 to try and kill the T-80BV. The Jaguar's going to get out on the left side there, but my seed Jaguar gets annihilated as it moves over the AA of Pyro. Still relatively happy with my position. I've done a bunch of damage to that T-80 because we did manage to hit one of the the missiles so I'm, I don't want to let him reload or repair it so I have just moved up here as soon as possible to try and engage it thankfully he misses his second shot and I'm going to be able to continuously engage it with the MX-30 I didn't want to trade one of these B2 Brennuses for the T-80 but I'm happy to do so um, if I have to and so that's why I just let them continue to fire even though one had taken damage because there's always a chance that you'll miss. So I wanted to have as much chance as possible to kill that T-80. Because it does kind of open the door for me to move a lot of my units further forwards. Which is exactly what you can see I'm following up by doing. And one thing that I was thinking about throughout the game. 
later on was this little area here you could definitely sneak some units around like i've only got this p4 pc in here on its own i'd say if you're playing this map definitely make sure you put some recon on this left side because it's an easy place to sneak around right amx 30s coming in t20s coming in with the grens is the vibs with the auto cannons on them These are fantastic for destroying infantry at range. Lisa Pelli, any infantry I'm finding just not really standing a chance because he's kind of lost his armoured support that he needed. AMX-30 was trying to get out of line of sight, couldn't quite do it in time. SU-25 going to get taken out. We've got the SU-22 coming in as well. That's going to die. Those things are quite expensive. I wasn't sure if it managed to get its value, but it did kill one of my AMX 30s. It also killed off a couple of my units here, like the AMX 10. So, yeah, not ideal for us because I've lost a lot of my sort of medium armor support that is really useful. A lot of those auto cannons that I was using to really put the extra damage onto this infantry because infantry on infantry engagements, like it's all very well, but. It takes forever, as you can see. So having the auto cannons there, or at least like the machine guns on main tanks, they tend to do more damage. I have now brought up my MX-30, the command variant. This is the B2. That's going to give us extra veterancy. SU-24 coming in with bombing strike onto the Grens here. Last bomb hits directly, unfortunately. That's going to get destroyed. But we did end up shooting down the bomber. The Roland 3 landed a nice shot there. So that worked out okay in the end. More VOBs on the way. Just got to keep piling in that infantry and these auto cannons. As long as I don't have to deal with more of his armor, it's totally fine. But he has now brought up the T 80 UD. And this is basically a super heavy. It's got the 21 front armor, so it's going to be very difficult for me to get shots in. Thankfully, I'm going to have this uh, AMX-10 look for some side shots. He doesn't have any recon. He's kind of blind. I've killed a lot of the infantry here, so you can't actually see the AMX-10. AMX-10 is not firing because it can't penetrate. So as soon as it shows side armor, he's going to be in trouble. But Jaguar coming in from Sturm Source does hit this T-80 UD, takes it down to half health. I've just got to try and break these down, and then we're good. As soon as that side sh shows side armor, AMX-10 fires away. Managed to take six health off that, which is really nice. I went to move it out of the way because I assumed it would see it, but it didn't in the end. So I'm going to be moving forward to the Apalas. We're going to try and finish that off, and we do manage to do so. So that is an expensive tank. Like these T-80 UDs, they cost 300, or sorry, yeah, 350 points. I'm going to be arting this one with my AMX Alpha ones. And that is basically the plan. Just arty them, get them out of the way, then I can move forwards with my lighter armor and just get into range to slap them in the face. I'm just going to be the next one to fire, be fought, fired at. Yeah, MJ is going to be moving that as I'm getting very close. Probably saw the voltages moving up here, so wants to get out of the way of those. More infantry, more VABs on the way. These are like the normal AMX 30Bs. These are still very good. Like for 95 points, getting 17 penetration is super, super good. I've got a couple more AMX Alpha ones here. Storm Source also firing away with his, but currently getting counter battery a little bit. I actually ended up targeting that as soon as it started firing to see if I could get rid of it. Those Grins not having a nice time against the BTR ATA. Motostrauki thankfully missed their RPG because it could have easily killed one of my Grins with the Apalas in those. The auto cannons pinning them down very quickly. A big damage coming in from the artillery. You see I've already taken three damage off. Like any direct hit, or even just hits near it, you can see I'm doing damage into the side and rear armor there. We took out two BTR-60s there as well. That's the infantry going down. He's going to smoke off his T-80 and pull that back. 
Because so I do have the MX-30s on the way. Monstroke to unload here, but we're going to be targeting them immediately since I can see them. All this recon really paying off, and also obviously the Grens moving up through the cover here. But I'm well ahead in terms of points right now, so it's going to be very difficult for MJ to come back because he has lost one of the T-80UDs already. He's not really being able to use his heavy armor the way he probably wanted to. And what I mean by that is generally you'd want to screen your heavy armor with like these Modestrauki and then in this case while my like AMX 30s are engaging his armor he could then move forwards with his armor and engage me but it just really wasn't working that way for him. MiG-31 going to be coming over the top here looking for Sturm Source's Mirage 3. Does end up getting shot down by A8. One of my AMX 30s does get popped by the T-80 still. The T-80 BV there. For the shots now onto the T80 UD. This one manages to finish off the T80 BV. There goes that one. The T80 UD down to one health. Just need to get one more shot off. And job done. Lovely. So it has just enough armor there, as you can see, to survive like one shot. Whilst also doing enough damage in this case to finish off that tank. Because I'd already hit that with some artillery I'd got the, well that UD actually got side shot by the, the AMX-10 earlier but yeah this one had been hit by artillery so just sneaking up close getting the shot off with the AMX-10 that's exactly what you want to be doing uh, with these tanks like at range the ranged engagements you're just not going to get anywhere because it's still two shots and you die even at range whereas at close range you still can take two shots but you have the damage as well because you can you know get closer uh, whenever you get like an extra 100 I think it's like 150 meter range you get like an extra AP towards your opponent's armor I'm gonna have to dodge the rocket artillery again AMX Alpha ones it was nice to be able to see the rockets come directly over my troops because I could see that it obviously wasn't going directly for my troops I think at this range this can't even target my troops anyway because it's minimum in range uh, but going to be getting my VIB T20s together now and just rushing through the trees in order to shoot down helicopters. That's actually what I was trying to do here. These T20s, they have the T20 auto cannon. This thing has better range against helicopters than it does against ground targets. So the semi <laughs> really regretting flying over the trees there and going to get shut down very quickly. Like a lot of my AA was actually quite far back. I am obviously moving it up as you can see uh, and I'm also now moving up my Roland but for a long time I didn't have much AA up here but thankfully the 79th doesn't have much in the way of decent aircraft or at least you know not like an abundance of it so you don't often see people relying on that another helicopter here getting smashed pretty hard by those auto cannons and we're going to be able to shoot that down and that's what I was looking for. That's what I found. I've also got the Escort D now coming up. These guys engage in the Sapoli down the road with the help of the MX 10Ps. Anytime we see another unit, the engagement is underway. This looks so cool. <laughs> I love zooming in in this game. Just all of the units look awesome. <laughs> so yeah, MJ's just tried to get some infantry across here. But unfortunately, I just have pretty much an overwhelming advantage on the island now. You can see the, the density of my units. And there's not really any option for him. Apart from maybe like a Buratino. Like a Buratino here would have been pretty nasty for me to deal with. But we're going to be bumping into these Tunguskas. The MX-10P here. here going to be popping both of those. It did manage to kill off my infantry squad, but there's this good there, just like really weak. Also managing to pop the cub there in the open field with the MX-30. So just in a really, really solid position with the plus three advantage on the clock. And now MJ is going to try and get across the bridge again. But taking out the BTR-80 there is going to make it very difficult. 
Got the rocket artillery coming in again. This time it's actually going to be going for the crossroads, which does have a pretty good potential of hitting reinforcements. So I ended up moving the logistics truck off the road. Like every time rockets fired over, I would check back here to see if my MX South ones needed to move. Also, at this point, I was, you can see, focusing over here as well because I wanted to give Sturm Source a bit of a hand with dealing with the push that was coming in from the KDH. Uh, Schutzen. But more AMX 30s on the way. Got two of the B2 Brennis variant. We've got the uh, AMX 30B. And there's also a standard B2 variant. Very cool. These were. Well, the idea was to dot them around the edge of the tree line here on the edge of the forest. Sapphire trying to run into my grens here to get the satchel off because the satchel can do some damage. Not half as strong as it used to be though as you can see. Only doing two damage a hit. Those satchels used to be able to like two shot an enemy squad. Now they're just nowhere near as good. Loads of counter battery coming in to onto Pyro now. I started focusing on helping out Sturm Source make some ground because there's not really much point in me trying to get across this bridge you can see like my grenadiers here going to be blocked off by the Resvedka and Motostrauki there's also still the BMP-1G over here this does have a grenade launcher so able to do some decent damage against infantry at range I do have the MX-30 coming over so that's going to be obviously able to help clean that up but at the end of the day, I'm not going to want to push across here because enemy aircraft can come in and easily bomb us or whatever. I'm not going to be able to go across here. Like, yeah, I can maybe try and get into position to cut off the, the flag and that. But it would have just been easier for me to reinforce here because it's closer to our spawn. And uh, I can I can back up Sturm Source's units. But the, the KDA shoots and pretty damn scary units because they do have 14 men per. Which means that they chip very, very quick. Infantry combat in this game at the moment is very reliant on just pure numbers, but Haru going to be coming in with his MiG RBF there, the MiG-25. So Foxbat goes down, MiG-27 goes down, another Foxbat goes down. Uh, between myself and uh, uh, Stem Source here, we had a lot of fighters. He's going to be losing one of his Mirages, but both of my Mirage F1Cs managed to get alive. Again, really like these aircraft, they look really cool. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, I did bring in the artillery onto the KDA Shudson. And temporarily, Pyro has managed to get a leader into this sector. I actually thought that we potentially lost the commands in here. So I did actually bring up an AMX uh, 20B2. It's nice because the command variants have this like different camo. It's like they have the, the old winter camo. I mentioned it in my deck overviews, but the reason they have winter camos is because uh, the idea is that they haven't been repainted because they're not supposed to be on the front line. Anyway, gonna be aiming at the Panzerga and also the Murchison here. Just continue the artillery support to help out Sturm Source, but we're just about to hit the max, and there we go. That is it. Total victory after 27 minutes and 46 seconds. So a nice fun push there through the chemical plant. Ended up with 6,890 kills, 2,515 losses. That's going to be a lot of the uh, heavy tanks there. Certainly added up in kills. Uh, MJ just struggling to be able to use them at close range against the uh, French jumping in and out of combat. Or, so especially like around the corners of all those like drums. So AMX-10 there, picking up the T-62, for example, also helping out support the infantry. The Mirage actually killing the MI-2 and the Spetsnaz early on was actually really nice. Uh, I've actually started to bring in aircraft at the start more often now, particularly fighters, because they really shut down people using a lot of helicopters early on to get like early recon starts. So yeah, definitely worth taking a fighter, I think, these days. Uh, AMX-10... There, taking out the T-80, for example, and then the BMP-2 just pays itself off so much. Uh, again, here, AMX-10, uh, this one popped the BRDM, so definitely paid itself off. AMX-30, taking out T-62 for us. Uh, the HOT-2 didn't really do too much. 
uh, and then end up getting shot down. <laughs> so that wasn't ideal. But another AMX 30 taking out the uh, T 80. Uh, we've got the Roland shooting down a couple of aircraft. These Rolands are really nice, particularly with a bit of extra veterancy. If you keep them near your leaders in a sector, then they can get some super accurate shots off, which is really nice. Uh, AMX 30 picking up the T 80 and the T 80 UD. Bear in mind, this is a super heavy tank. <laughs> it's nice that you can get the job done with your AMX 30s at close range. Uh, the MI 8s getting shot down by the VAB T 20s. And then the MX 10s coming in there to secure the island for me. AMX F 1s didn't do too much in terms of getting kills, but whittling down those heavy tanks was super important for that artillery. So that's what I used it for. It also lowers the cohesion. And with lower cohesion, particularly when it gets to like the lowest cohesion, you get like a minus 50% rate of fire bone, uh, a penalty, sorry. So it can get pretty bad. But yeah, a pretty solid game, honestly. A very convincing victory. Just a really good terrain for the French, that is. And very difficult for the 79th guards. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,